Hello friends and welcome to another making video. So this is number four in the making series. First we did earrings, let's twist a ring and the pendant and today we are going to be learning how to make a bezel set stone. So this is actually a two-part video. So the first se first section we're going to cover how to create the little cup that the stone's going to go in and then next week we're going to turn that into a necklace so that it is beautiful with a beautiful stone inside. So let's get started and join me on the bench. So I've got a cabochon here. So the, the shape of a cabochon is flat underneath and then it's got a little wall which goes up and then curves over. So if this is your first time setting a stone, I would highly recommend using this shape, a round one or an oval one, as they're the easiest to just get the hang of things with. So what I'm going to do is just draw the little necklace that I'm going to make so that you have an idea of what I'm doing and also just to kind of see how it's going to look in my mind and if that's what I want to do exactly. So I am going to hold my finger on here and the great thing with stones is that you can just trace them so you can have the exact size there. So like that and then what I'm thinking is to melt some little balls out of some scraps and then solder those on here. So just three little balls here and then I want to do kind of like a statement-y hook because it's always really a good idea to think about how you're going to attach the necklace to your chain without just always thinking, oh, I'm just going to solder a jump ring on. So I'm going to do an extension here. So it's kind of a nice shape, like a teardrop shape in the end. But what I'm going to do is actually put a twist in this metal here so that it actually extends and there's a loop. So there's a little twist here. And you obviously can't see it so well on the drawing, but you will see when I am doing it with the metal so that you have the jump ring facing the correct direction. Because if I didn't do that and I just had this and I put the chain through here, then it was going to mean that the pendant hangs to the side and we don't want that. So we are going to have it like that. So, oops, <laughs> free, so that the chain goes through there and it hangs the right way. So we're going to have that and then obviously this is our stone here. I'm not going to color that in totally, but you get the idea. So a stone there, little balls. So today in this video, we're going to learn how to make this little cup that this stone is going to sit in. We won't be able to put the stone in yet because we need to solder all the other things on and create all of those before we solder that because we can't solder once the stone is in. So that is why this is a two part video. So let's get started with that first section. In terms of metal that we're going to use, I have got a piece of sheet metal here, which is 0.5 mil thick, so 0.5 millimeters thick. So I have that, and that's going to form the base of it. And then I've got bezel wire. So this is very, very different to any other strip of wire that you would get because it's a whole lot softer. So we're going to use this because it helps us to really shape around the bezel snug 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 so we do need quite a lot of precision for this one so if you're not feeling super good with filing or anything yet i would hop back on and do one of those previous videos with the earrings and the um uh, the ring first um but if you've done that and you're confident with that let's get crackling with this so what i'm going to do is get a piece of this bezel wire and then we want to wrap it around here and see exactly what size we need it to be so we want to have no gap whatsoever and we want the stone to fit snugly in there so we're going to do this but a good idea also to do is to cut a piece of paper if you want to try that or you can just go wrap this around so pushing it down against the table and wrap it wrap it wrap it so it's very, very soft, so handle it with care so you don't squish it too much. And then we're going to make a little mark with a scribe where it overlaps. So get yourself a little metal scribe. And then obviously you want to make sure that that's straight, so I'm just going to use a pair of pliers just to straighten that one up because it's folded in a little bit actually the pointy ones are better the pointy ones are better because the flat ones are really wide and they flatten out the whole section there so we still want to keep that nice rounded shape and we don't have any gaps there so i'm going to try and do this and then overlap it 
and I'm gonna cut it a little bit bigger than I need because we need to file it. So we want to file it to a snug, snug fit. So let's look at that. So this does take a little bit of fiddling, but once you get it, you'll get it. So that's pretty snug. There's tiny little gaps there, but we're going to get rid of those. What I want to do now is to mark over there where it overlaps, but just a bit beyond because I want to file up to that so that I make sure that that line's really, really straight. So I'm going to mark it on the bottom where it overlaps, just with a small little scribe line like that. And I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to snip that off with these shears and I'm going to cut a little bit bigger than what I need like I was saying the little line is just there so I need to file all of that off but I want that to be really nice and straight and snug I'm not going to worry too much about the shape right this minute but I'm going to just file that and then see does it fit or does it need to wiggle or what. Okay, so to file we're going to head over to the bench peg and do that. So now we're going to file. I'm using my flat pointy needle file because this is my one of my favorite ones. And the thing with a bezel wire is that it's really, really soft. So you can't really hold it the same way you would hold a ring. So just hold it in a way that you're not going to misshape it too much because obviously you want to still have that shape. And the thing with wires, if you kink it one way, then it's going to have that little bump in it and it's going to be really hard to flatten it out. So you want to still kind of maintain the, the, the same direction of the wire, if that makes sense. So not bending it suddenly this way, this way a lot. So just open it a little bit like this and then I kind of hold it like this and then just get as best grip as you can. So as you can see, my thumb is kind of this way and then my finger like that. That works well for me. Obviously it depends on you and what feels comfortable for your fingers, but just hold it in a way that it's not gonna move too much. Now you wanna control this angle. So we wanna be obviously making that edge flat and reflecting the, sa the same shape as this one. So I'm just gonna go for a flat, but if you need to take more of this side or that side, angle it accordingly. Maybe head back to the ring tutorial for more explanation on that. But obviously this is really quite a thin little section here. So shouldn't need too much tweaking. But just keep in mind if you're going too much like this or like this. And adjust accordingly. So I'm just going to go gently across here. I know I need to still take off a fair little bit because I've got little marks over here. What you can also do is open that out and just flat straighten that little piece. And just draw with a ruler straight across using the right angle on the top if you want to do that but I can see exactly where I'm going to go over there and it's just a tiny bit off but it's pretty straight so I'm just going to work with that because I have a nice shape here and I don't want to mess with it so just work your way with this side and then we want the other side to reflect this exactly so it doesn't actually matter if you angle it a bit like this or like this this doesn't have to be perfectly straight as long as they mirror each other. So I'm just going to take off a bit of here and then I'm going to take a bit of this side because this side was cut. So it's kind of pinched in a little bit. You can kind of see that the metal kind of reflects in a bit there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, I want that to be nice and straight. So I'm going to switch those around and just take off a bit of this side and make sure that that is a really nice straight edge. and. Because it's quite thin, a lot will come off quite quickly. So just take care with that. The idea is that you want it to be like really snug. So you want the stone to just push into it nice and snugly. Um, we're not going to solder it with a stone in, obviously. So it can be a little bit tight. And then you push the stone in, but not too tight, obviously. It's a very delicate <laughs> thing with setting stones. It can't be too loose and it can't be too tight. So real precision work and some lots of patience so be patient with yourself this may take you a little while um okay let's have a little look and see so i can see over there I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up but there's a little gap still on the top there so i need to just take that down a little bit more you don't want to have any any gaps anywhere because it's a lovely idea to think that solder is going to fill gaps, 
but it doesn't. So it has to be a really nice snug join, otherwise it won't look too good. It won't be nice and strong. Right, so I'm going to look at that and then see if I need to take off more in total. Okay, that's close, close, but I just want to see now how much I need to actually still get rid of. I think I still need to get rid of a fair bit. So I'm going to push them kind of like overlapping just so I want to see what size it is when they're just touching like this. And then I'm going to put it on the stone. So let's just grab that stone. And see that's still too big. So if I hold that up, that's still too loose in there. So I need to take off some more. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go back to this one that's got my little line on it. I just wanted to do that one first because obviously I didn't know how much I needed to take off that before it was straight rather than just working on the straight one first, if that makes sense. So let's take off a bit more of this side. Making sure not to angle my file like this or like this because that's when you're going to nick off here and here and then you're just going to be continuously making it smaller and smaller and not making it fit, not making it neat. So do a bunch and then assess. Okay. So again, looking at different facets, if the light's shining from different angles on the surface here, then that means your, your file is going at different angles. So you wanna really, really try and avoid that. So I'm gonna go a little bit more. You can see it's nice and straight, but I can still see my little line that I'm working towards it needs to be a little bit closer to that. So with a file, you can push quite hard because when you push hard, you have more control over it and it just does a nice smoother, smoother file, I guess <laughs> you'd call it. Um, rather than if you do it lightly, then your file is going to swim around and you don't really have as much control over the direction that it's going in. So let's get in there. A little bit more from this side. Okay, so now I've made it round-ish. It's got a few little kinks in it, but I just want to solder that join first, and then I can squeal and wiggle that a little bit freely without worrying about the join. So it's, I think it will be pretty snug, but I think it should fit over the stone. So make sure that you have a nice clean join like that with no gaps on either end. So that's why it's always a good idea when you're practicing, when you're just starting out, to make sure that you leave yourself enough metal to be able to file that. So it's good practice just to really practice filing and making sure you know how to get that join. Um, so do that. Don't worry if you don't get it the first time. Just try another one. Um, or grab another stone that's a little bit smaller and keep going. Okay, so I'm going to head over to soldering station and solder this join. I'm going to make up some flux in here for starters. We don't need a whole lot, but just get a little bit of that going. So we just want to make a paste. It absorbs quite a lot of the water quite quickly with this uh, borax cone. So I also got a bunch of flux on here, so that just need a tiny bit of this. And we're just going to paint this onto the join. So I'm just going to pick that up and put some flux on here both sides just to be sure. So this is going to stop the um, stop the metal from oxidizing which will allow it to stay clean so that the solder will flow there. So I'm just going to grab a piece of solder and position it onto the soldering block. You always want to use as little solder as possible. So let's grab that piece and it should pull and jump up into that full join there. So I'm going to position that so that it's equally touching both sides so it's not on one side or the other side of the join it's in the middle and it's touching the piece that we're going to solder so the difference with soldering bezel wire and normal wire you'll see is that it heats up super fast so you need to be very very quick and take the heat off as soon as it goes i'm going to just like make this flame a little bit less strong so like that we still want to have points so that we can know where we're soldering Hold that in your left hand, just from a distance to start off with, so that the flux bubbles. And you can rearrange your little piece of solder, because 
it always likes to move. So I'm making sure that that's on the join there. And then like that and in a sec. So that went, but I think it went to the side. Yeah, you can see it on the side there. So I'm just going to try and bring that over, directing it with my probe. But it's a bit risky heating it up too much, so I'm just going to reassess that. That first little solder attempt didn't work. So as you can see, it jumped to the left. There's two reasons for that. So one, well actually there's three reasons for that. The one reason was when the solder flicked, um, in the beginning when the, when the flux was bubbling, it went over to the side and I didn't move it across this way quick enough before it was ready to solder. Mm. One. Two, it was maybe the join is not as snug as I think, because just having a look at it now, I can see that it's actually touching more on the inside than it is on the outside. Um, it looked good at first thoughts, but actually looking at it closer, that join could actually be better. So that means that it didn't um, have a strong enough um, bridge between them to be able to join. Or the third other option could have been the reason that I was heating up this side more than the other side. You but you need to heat both up evenly. So obviously when I'm being filmed, I'm always not paying as much attention to what I'm doing as all the things going on around me. So I missed a slip here. So what I'm going to do is I can file this off a little bit here so that I don't have that excess solder there and then just go again. So it's been in the pickle, so it's nice and clean. I'm going to also just double check my join and make sure that that is all really nice and snug and um, going to solder better for the next go. So when you don't, you know, when it doesn't work, then it's always good to know what to do. So that's why I kind of thought I'd just explain this to you while we're here. All right, so I'm going to go and clean that up and then I'll be back here and ready for the next session. I have refiled that, filed off the solder that was over here and just refiled that joint a little bit better. Yes, it's not round now, but I didn't want to take off any more metal from this and I'll make it nice and round afterwards. So as long as those joints are really nice and snug, that is what we want. So I'm going to put some flux again. So just going to get that on there, inside and outside. Just a little bit over there. Okay, and then put that down again. And let's get a piece of solder. Make sure that's touching. Okay, and let's go. Nice and slowly from a distance to start off with to let that solder do all of, sorry, let that flux do all of its bubbling. Make sure it doesn't flick my little piece of solder. Literally loves to flick your solder. So Go, make sure I'm heating up both sides evenly. There we go. See that? So just make sure you're heating up both sides accurately, uh, accurately, evenly. And then let's give that a little quench and chuck it in the pickle. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Fab. What we're going to do here is use the pen or something that's nice and round to help recreate that shape. So I'm going to just use this and kind of gently recreate that shape, get it nice and round, get all the little kinks out of it. So this will be a little bit of a process to do. So let's just do our best with this and recreate a nice round shape. So it is quite soft, so it's fairly easy to bend, which can be a good thing, but also can be a tricky thing to work with. So. Let's do that. Obviously, when we push it over the stone, it will kind of snug into place, but we want to have a decent enough shape to start off with. So that already looks better on that side. I'm going to flip it over and just work on this side to make sure that those lines, those side walls are nice and parallel on 
both sides looking good. So just squish that in. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. And now I've squished it a bit on this side, so I'm just going to gently squish it there. That looks okay. So I think from here we can snug it over the stone and then see how that fits. There we go. So that's great. So that's what we want. We want it to be nice and tight, but not too tight that you can't get it on and not too loose that it doesn't sit in there properly. So that looks really good. So what we're going to see now is that we want to bring down this external wall so that it doesn't cover the whole stone when we when we push it over. So I'm going to kind of use my scribe and make a little mark kind of where I kind of want to bring it down to. So if you look at the shape of the cabochon, you're going to see those walls that go up and then they curve in. We want it to be on that part that curves in. Obviously, we don't want it to be too far over because otherwise it's going to cover a lot of your stone. So I'm going to just hold it to the side and kind of just look in there and see where I think I want to get it down to. So I'm just filing it down to the line, so I'm nearly done. And then I'm going to sand that down. So let's just file that down. And then on a piece of sandpaper, what I'm just going to do is sand this now so that that surface is really nice and flat and make sure it's all the way to my line. So I have a little bit more to do on this side. So I'm just going to put a little bit more pressure on that side. And then once it's all even, just to make sure that it's all nice and even, you can do a little figure of eight. So going like this in a circle, sorry, in a figure of eight, because then you get a nice even same, same surface on either side. But I just want a bit more on this side, so I'm just going to push my thumb down on that side just to take a bit more off that side. So and let's work that down. Okay, making sure I'm not squishing it too much. Uh, a little bit more to go, and then we should be good. And then put it on your desk somewhere really flat and just check if there's no gaps and just slowly turn it around make sure that there's no gaps on there and on the other side as well great i'm just going to push this over the stone now that i've got that nice and steady just to make sure that it is exactly the right size and shape so making sure that that's perfectly round because what we're going to next do is solder that to the plate so to this piece of sheet here Boom, like that. So we want to make sure that it is exactly the right shape because once it's soldered, obviously we can't adjust that. So just make sure that you're happy with the way that that looks. And tweak anything that needs to be, but that looks pretty good. Right, so that looks good. So what I'm gonna do is just push that stone out now. Pop that out. And then I know that this is the side that goes down. So what I'm going to do now is to just draw a little piece that I'm going to cut off here. I'm just going to go in the corner here and then cut off a piece. So I'm just going to saw a bit bigger than I need because we want a surface to put the solder chips on. So I'm going to go here, here, just kind of something like that um, and just cut that off there. Okay. So let's just cut that. It doesn't really matter if it's exactly straight or not, because we just want a piece. Spot. Just a little rough cut. Great. So now we're going to take this plastic off here. So just pulling your nail into it. And peeling that off. And the other side. That, great. And now we're going to solder that boom, onto there. I'm just gonna double check that there's no gaps. Because if there's gaps, there's gonna be a gap and that's gonna be a problem. 
that looks great. So we're gonna leave enough space just on the on that surface there. Okay. So let's head over to the soldering station and set that up and get that soldered. So let's mix up a bit more flux. And then we just want to get that on the bottom and on the top. So I'm just going to paint this sheet first of all. Give that a little bit of a flux love. And then we're going to paint the bottom of this as well. And put that on there. And just set that up so you have enough space on the outside of that piece of sheet. And what you want to do now is position your solder chips around the outside of your piece. The reason we do it on the outside is because sometimes if we use a slightly big piece or something, it's going to make little lumps or bumps on the inside, which will make mean that your stone isn't going to be set completely and utterly flat. So we want to avoid that. And we're going to cut all this excess off the outside anyway. So let me just find some nice pieces. And then we're going to position them at little intervals um, and then all of those will flow. So we want to kind of estimate, okay, that piece is going to fill there, that piece fills there, because you know how solder flows when it, when it heats up. So I'm just going to place these around. Obviously on my wish list of tools would be a little turntable thing so that while I'm soldering this I can spin it around. But to be honest, I don't do loads of stone settings, so it's fine when I do do them. So obviously I could have that turntable, but you can manage without it as well. So you don't really need to run out and buy every single tool for every single thing. Especially if you don't do it that often, then there's no point really buying an expensive tool for just a simple little thing if you don't really need it. If it's something you do often and it's just going to speed up processes a lot for you, then obviously I'd recommend doing that. But um you really don't need to go and buy everything on day one just see what you use and what you really really need so some of these chips are just really small and some of them are really big so i'm just trying to find the medium-sized ones in here um just need one more or maybe two more between here so just position them make sure that they're touching the thing that you've created your bezel um and yeah, so I'm going to maybe put another little one in between there because that one's a little small. Shaky hands. Okay, that should do. I'm just going to switch this one's angle because it's lengthwise. Just want it to be touching there. So there we go. So obviously we need to take real care now when we're heating this up to do it really, really slowly from a distance because... Those solder chips are probably going to want to flick, so make sure that your probe is in your right hand and just gently, gently, from a distance, heat that solder up slowly. It's already dried while I was setting it up, so that's good, but you want to just take it real slow. Just watch them all, make sure none of them are flicked off when it bubbles like that. So. Just keep an eye on them all. So it kind of goes to a bubbly stage, and then it goes to a sticky stage. So we're at sticky stage now, so then they start to stick. And obviously remember it heats up really, really fast. So then you want to focus the tip of that flame on that thing and just let all of those flow. And I'm going around so you won't be able to see the back here, but just making sure each of those solder chips flow. There we go, see that? Voila, it goes super nice and shiny when it all flows and all whoop, falls into place. Fab, so now I'm just gonna quench that and chuck it in the pickle. Give that a few minutes in there, pickle's super hot. Okie doke, so now that that's out of the pickle and all nice and clean, I'm going to cut off this excess, but I'm not gonna cut flush with here because obviously we want to file, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit leave myself a little bit of space so I can file that last bit down so I don't accidentally cut into the wall. So. There we go. So we're going to use this 
later for our little balls we're gonna make in our next session. So that's what we want to look like that and then we're gonna file that. So because I have a fair amount to file off I'm gonna use my bigger file which will leave marks. So when you're working this hold your finger inside there so that you're not squishing that shape and then work your way around and you want to stop basically just when you're getting in line with that. So you want to kind of avoid filing this bezel wire. You want to just get that excess off and then you don't want to leave any big file marks on this. So I'll switch to the smaller file when I get closer to that. So for now we just want to take off the bulk of it with this going in circular motion, working your way around, 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 around. So I'm making sure that my file is straight so that I'm not angling that down and just taking that extra excess off there. And I'm going to go just almost there and then I'm going to do that last bit with my smaller file because the grooves that the smaller file leave are nowhere near as big as this big file of mine. Because I don't want to have to like sand too much on this bezel wire because it is really, um, it's really, really thin. So there we have it. I've filed all the way around the outside of that so we have a nice even finish and now we're going to sand that so that it's nice and smooth. Um, I'm not going to put the stone in now because we need to solder all the other bits on first and the last thing we do is put the stone in and then seal that up. So let's just give that a little quick sand over. Uh, you can do that by hand just with a 400 or 600 grit sandpaper and work your way up. Um, if you want a nice finish, but don't worry about giving it a high polish now because obviously we're still going to solder it. But removing the scratches now before we solder on the little balls is going to be a lot easier because obviously you don't want to have to work around all of your little balls afterwards. So I'm going to do this with a pendant motor just to give it a quick once over. But really, really don't take off too much because obviously it's already very, very thin. So I'm just using one of these like split pin things to wrap some sandpaper around because mine just finished and you I use this as a really fast way of sanding things obviously it doesn't work for everything like if it's a really flat surface um, and it's like a sheet then you're not going to work with this because it's going to leave little grooves but in terms of like sanding rings and anything that's a little bit more round it's easier to do that so I'm gonna do that and then just secure that down with a bit of tape there and you can buy these like ready-made but obviously then they run out quite quickly and then you need to buy a new one so just to save a bit of money I just put the little pin and then you pop that on and you can just keep refilling it with whatever grit you want as well so that's pretty handy okay so I'm just going to go quite lightly because I don't want to take off too much but just for now obviously we still need to we're gonna have to finish it up properly again when we put the stone in and all of that afterwards but for now that looks great so that is ready to have the next stages done so that is all we're gonna do for this week well there we have the little cup and there's the stone so don't be tempted to put it in there now because obviously you're not gonna be able to get it out so only put it in when you're ready to set it so next week we are going to finish it up but that is all for this week I really hope you enjoyed and join me next week for part two where I show you how to turn this little bit of scrap which was on the outside into a beautiful little decoration for it. I really hope you enjoyed that and if you feel drawn to subscribe, like or comment go ahead. I am always super appreciative when you do so it helps the channel grow and helps me reach a wider audience such as yourself to be able to share more value with the beautiful lovely handmade jewelry community. So see you next week for part two where we get this beauty finished. Cool, see you next week, bye!